we're going to use this simulation to uh, review the models of the atom. Um, we're going to use a probe, and the probe here is a light gun, and we've got it set to fire ultraviolet radiation at 94 nanometers into a box of hydrogen. Now this box of hydrogen is going to function much in the same way as the uh, emission tube with hydrogen in it did for us in the lab. The first model we look at is the billiard ball model, and that's Dalton's model. To Dalton, atoms were solid little objects like billiard balls. They didn't really have any internal structure, but um, uh, they, what they did have was mass. So if we were to fire ultraviolet photons at this particular structure, they would just bounce off the billiard ball and not interact with it at all. The next model of the atom was the plum pudding model, or the raisin muffin model, or depending on what continent you're on, it'll, it'll be different sorts of, uh, of things. We'll call it the raisin muffin model. And the raisin muffin model spoke about the atom as consisting of small negative charges scattered throughout a positive matrix. And you can see really there's not much of an interaction here between the photons and the, uh, and the atom itself, or the parts of the atom. So the atom does have parts now, but it has no internal structure. Then Rutherford did his gold foil experiment, and he proposed a classical solar system model for the atom. But you saw what happened there. Um, it was successful in terms of explaining his experimental results, but to have an electron whizzing around a small, positively charged nucleus was totally against what they believed in classical physics that electron should spiral into the nucleus, be captured by the nucleus, and the atom should disappear in, uh, uh, well, what is sometimes called a flash of purple light, or in this case, kaboom. It was up to Niels Bohr to uh, deal with the problems of the Rutherford atom, and he did so by saying that the electron can only exist on certain energy levels within the atom, and that what the electron can do is bounce between levels, and it's only when moving between levels that the electron absorbed or gave up energy. And we can see that happening here as the electron moves around between the various orbits. Notice that it doesn't move between the orbits, really. It is in one orbit, and then it blinks and is in a different orbit. So we've got this electron jumping from orbit to orbit within the atom. The atom cannot self-destruct because the electron cannot be any place but in one of these energy levels. Now, this worked very well for hydrogen, and all atoms are species with only one electron. But the minute a second electron was introduced into the system, it didn't work anymore. So it was great for hydrogen, but it didn't help to explain anything about any other atom. The change came when uh, the work of de Broglie indicated that we should be looking at the electron as a wave rather than as a particle. And uh, the initial thing that de Broglie did was to imagine that electrons would occupy orbits where their wave functions would uh, interact positively and um, like sort of like a snake grabbing onto its tail. And that idea also was able to duplicate the orbits of Bohr. So with the view of the electron as a wave, it was then up to the quantum mechanical people and Schrodinger to take that to its ultimate and to look at the wave function of the electron in the atom and to introduce the concept of orbitals and the four quantum numbers that we know right now.